When you think of Breath of the Wild, you probably know it as that really popular open world Zelda game that everyone compares everything to. But you might also know it for another reason, glitches. Over the years, this once wholesome game has been slowly broken and brought down to its knees by glitch hunters, to the point where duplicating weapons, breaking reality, getting impossible weapons, insta-killing bosses, clipping through walls, and launching across the map has become commonplace in Hyrule. As a precursor, let's note that we will be covering the most famous and useful glitches, we are crediting by first video proof, and these are just basic explanations of these 19 historic breakthroughs that made this list of Glitch of the Wild. If you enjoy content like this, let us know by hitting that subscribe button, as the community and I put a lot of work to make this happen for you. With that said, let's take a time machine back to Breath of the Wild's humble beginnings. Back in the early days of Breath of the Wild speedrunning, this first major trick allowed Link to be quickly moving at all times. By holding down the whistle button and mashing sprint, he would not only not use stamina, but recover it as well, and easily scale steep hills. There were whispers that whistle sprinting was possible on the day of the game's release, with the first video footage being posted the very next day. This, as well as a less consistent but quieter throw sprinting, which was also discovered on the game's release day, are still used to this day in both speedrunning and casual play. <laughs> Believe it or not, this technique was found literally two days after the game's launch, but the potential wasn't completely understood until it resurfaced nearly a year and a half later. Shield clipping completely changed the game with its flexibility and ease of use. By bonking your shield on an angled surface, Link's position is saved at that angle, and he will pivot harshly back when he unequips his shield again. Doing this shield bonk during bullet time also led to the discovery of skew bouncing, which made aggressive skews that launched Link upwards for easy bullet time in combat. This concept led to many massive speedrunning discoveries, including skipping all sorts of shrines and skipping Trial of the Sword entirely, and it has been in use ever since. The base idea for stasis launching was technically performed as early as July 9th, 2016, in a Breath of the Wild demo before the game's launch but it officially made its way into mainstream speedrunning within the first several days of Breath of the Wild's launch. By spin attacking a stasis object, then grabbing it or hitting yourself with it midair, this launched Link at high speeds. While people argue that it is just physics manipulation and not actually a glitch, what matters is it paved the way for a multitude of general launching techniques that would evolve over the years. This advanced technique was found literally one week after the release of Breath of the Wild, but was also written off as something useful in speedruns because it needed the Hylian Shield. Over a year later, user Yuda repurposed it for something else entirely, combat. By hitting your shield while jumping without breaking it, it would knock you upwards and allow a second jump, giving you enough height for bullet time. It's amazing to see a move that was initially ignored become one of the most useful combat techniques ever created. One of the first major speedrunning techniques to get you off the Great Plateau Tower, this allowed you to fall from any height without the paraglider and not die upon impact. By throwing and switching equipment at the last second before you hit the ground, you negate fall damage entirely. While this becomes unnecessary once you get the paraglider, this is still, to this day, invaluable when combined with modern launch techniques to speedrun safely on the Great Plateau before you get the paraglider. Shortly after the discovery of stasis launching, people started randomly getting launches with double the speed and distance, not knowing why. This launch seems really fast. Like, look at this. How is this launch so fast? It was nearly two weeks later that players started to grasp why these super launches were occurring, and it was because opening the paraglider while the game is dropping frame late from loading multiple objects on screen caused Link to massively increase his momentum. This was researched further, and players developed ways to forcefully induce this lag to make super speed launches a consistent speedrun technique. To this day, it's still used in conjunction with many launching techniques to massively increase launching capabilities. While the flying machine was fairly useful for traversing the map without using any resources, people fondly remember this glitch more for the sheer spectacle of flying across the map in this ridiculous contraption. By placing a metal box or minecart on top of another minecart, magnesising the lower cart will lift the cart between you and Link and levitate Link upwards infinitely. It's hard to forget it once you've seen it. One of the most popular glitches to this day because of its high utility, menu overloading has gone through several iterations over the years. 
to a streamlined setup that now takes about 10 seconds to perform. By having multiple active multi-shot shock bows in a certain area, the game's memory overloads, allowing the player to desync inventory items in beneficial ways. The ability to duplicate and transfer durability of equipment, and take advantage of a certain NPC to perform the best rupee farming method in the game, has made this one of the most valuable glitches in Breath of the Wild history. There weren't many huge combat discoveries in the game's first year, but one of the bigger exploits at the time was the bow spin. By pressing attack and bow shot while spinning a heavy weapon, it would place the active weapon on your back, put the bow in your hands. It was initially passed off as a gimmick, until I found its secret combat effects with Great Frost Blades and Great Thunder Blades to perform ice and thunder chaining. Shortly after, I discovered True Freeze Chaining, which is still the only technique in the game that keeps the enemy locked in a frozen state completely, never breaking them out of frozen status while getting hit. Arguably the most iconic combat trick to this day, Daruk's Perfect Parry allows a user to use Daruk's protection infinitely over and over. But in order to initiate this trick, you must release CL within 2 frames of the attack or bomb striking Link, making this move not just efficient for combat, but also a show of high skill to perform this timing specific trick. This technique's versatility got only more and more advanced as time went on, with the addition of perfect Daruk rushes, quick rushes, Daruk's launch, and landing Daruk rushes. There were small breakthroughs in launching techniques in Breath of the Wild at this point, but none as game-changing in terms of speed and distance as bullet time bounces. While it was initially shown off as early as August 2018, it didn't find an audience until another user posted it to Twitter and went viral. By striking an enemy with your shield to make them ragdoll while you're in bullet time, Link was propelled at unreal speeds, with capabilities even surpassing super launches. Setups improved as time went on, and this became one of the most common ways to navigate the world during speedruns. By performing a sequence involving a glitched camera state, holding an item, and viewing a memory, the game then leads to unique effects loading into different areas. Shrine apparatus storage led to several important findings, including the exploring of bottom of void pits, keeping Death Mountain's hot air effects around you, which led to explosive combat techniques, ignoring all elements, and most useful of all, the ability to steal the Master Sword early and duplicate hearts and stamina. Perfect for the completionist who wanted a full row of hearts and stamina. Another version of this iconic glitch was technically seen as early as 4 months after the game's release, with the finding of the World Reset glitch, but was quickly patched. It then resurfaced years later when a player wanted to take pictures with the Guardian, and then accidentally refound the glitch by pushing into strange places. Breath of the Wild's map is broken up into a grid system, and by pushing a dynamic object 2 grid spaces over, the Guardian would then spawn endless Guardian parts. This led to the best way to farm ancient materials in the game. <laughs> Moon jumping brought both entertainment and speedrunning value, giving players freedom to jump to any height and go anywhere they please. Mounting a wild horse while you owned a horse during the mounted archery minigame caused Link to be stuck in this moon jump state. This shortly after brought the discovery of wrong warping to Breath of the Wild, allowing Link to spawn in certain predetermined locations including brand new areas he's never explored before, as well as out of bounds. Out of all the discoveries in Breath of the Wild, Wind Bombs, also known as Bomb Impact Launches, is arguably one of the most important ever found. By placing two bombs in a row behind Link in bullet time, the wind box of the farthest bomb pushed the closer bomb into Link and launched him at high speeds. This newfound ability completely strong-armed every obstacle Breath of the Wild built for puzzling and exploration and tossed it to the side, giving the ability to completely skip shrines and traverse the world in a multitude of custom angles, speeds, and directions. This technique to traverse massive distances in any direction at any time with very little setup changed Breath of the Wild forever. Ways to insta-kill bosses have always been sought after for glitch hunters, and on November 9th, 2019, the exploit to completely skip Wind Blight or Calamity Ganon were found. By firing an arrow before entering an introduction cutscene, the invisible suspended arrow did live, continuous damage through the cutscene, making the boss dead on arrival. Breath of the Wild speedrunning was never the same ever since. The introduction of the Thunderclap Rush completely opened up a new layer of combat to the game. By pressing attack and bow shot while in midair, this would force the game to initiate bullet time and flurry rushes back to back. This led to a much deeper understanding of the mark and chase mechanic, which is the backbone of how the game figures out where to put Link while he's flurry rushing. If there's anything we've seen so far that screams glitch, 
this would take the cake. This strange bug is exclusive to the Switch version of Breath of the Wild and was initially found as a Lizalfos curse, but for some reason it was patched out when the VR update was added to Breath of the Wild. This glitch was seemingly lost forever, until it was refound through the Hinox curse and the Boomerang curse. By bringing a Hinox or Stalnox to a waterfall, or throwing a boomerang underwater while the game was overloaded, the entire game engine breaks, causing the rotation bug, and some of the creepiest physics glitches possible in Breath of the Wild. Finally, what many have considered as the most difficult, complex, and most rewarding glitch in recent discovery is the memory storage glitch. By performing a complex, frame-perfect menu glitch, this allows Link to play a brand new file while you have a memory stored. By then completing the new game without ever dying because the game will not save, this allows Link to duplicate Colosseum enemies, obtain the unattainable Bow of Light, skip the Great Plateau, obtain 80,000 arrows, and more. This is, in a sense, the uncovering of a true New Game Plus file, and by far is one of the most colossal discoveries ever found in Breath of the Wild. And that brings us to today. This game has been completely transformed over the past 4 years, and although this may seem like quite a few discoveries, the actual list of glitches easily goes into the thousands, and will continue to climb as people keep pushing Breath of the Wild. A big thank you to the Breath of the Wild community for helping develop this list, and if you enjoy this journey back in time, subscribe to GameSpot to keep up with the latest Breath of the Wild content.